What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Pitch Please podcast. Today, I'm talking to Ferial from HRX Connect. They're a HR, fractional HR and recruitment firm uh, for SMBs, which obviously is super relevant to startups, but they themselves are also a startup. And so today, to talk about that, we're going to be learning a little bit more about the founder story and what they're building. Uh, Ferial, welcome to the show. Why don't you start by you know giving us a quick background about yourself and your role at HRX Connect? Yeah, for sure. Thank you for having me, Mike. We're super excited to be here. Of course, um, quick background about me. It's funny how I start with saying um, I studied um, HR, graduated from York University in HR, and I've just been in different um, industries in HR as I started my career. Heavily unionized, funny enough, um, in construction, went into healthcare, from healthcare went more into media, um, then the marketing side of the agency, and then the very famous traditional B2B SaaS Um And so here I am today as a founder. My role within the organization is I would assume a lot of startups can relate to it, anything and everything, uh, but more like a CEO, COO, CFO. (laughs) I love it. And so background in HR. So I guess I already see the dots starting to connect. Um, But what kind of put you from what you were doing, which is studying HR and integrating as a HR consultant or HR practitioner at different organizations to bringing this into some type of business for yourself? Um, So I guess we can reveal the secret over here. Um, Almost every founder that I also interact with, because we do work to your point with a lot of startups, had a fa- had a journey, um, had a story, wanted to become a founder. Not to say that mine was accidental. I loved what I was doing. I, I love being in HR, um, establishing organizations with their infrastructures, departments, and whatnot. I was working full time, and I remember not taking vacation, literally, or even like sick days, for three to four years. Oh, wow. I single parent my son alone. And there was a point, and this was back in March 2022, where I was like, I just need to quit. And um, I did that. And I had no idea what I wanted to do, but I did want to take time and reflect back upon what are my next steps looking like. Very mature into my career. Um, Again, I loved doing HR. And so took some time off, thought about it, and loved what I was doing. But how do you do that at scale? Um, And that's kind of, I think, how the business idea was born, where I can be an extension um, started by myself, still solo, uh, preneur, and how can I help other organizations because I noticed the gap that's there in HR. That's impressive. So did you, up until that moment, ever think you would become a founder? Um, Or was this sort of the tipping point of so much pressure, no time off, work-life balance, and figuring out how to create a step change, but then maybe bring that to market at scale. Was that really the moment that turned you into a founder? I think it was. And to your point, it was a combination. It was the whole work-life balance. But because I was so passionate about what I was doing and I saw the success rate when I was working full-time that, oh my God, HR, aside from the myths or the stereotypical ways as it's been seen, you can actually do so much more. And so there was a lot of startups with the same employer that I was a part of. And when you're building an infrastructure, you see with when you joined their organization that was an early stage startup back then to when you actually have access to an expert expert HR, what the differentiator and the difference maker is in order to help you succeed with the idea that you have. So maybe now is a good time to even start to talk about a little bit about what that is. So can you give us a little bit of background on what HRX Connect is and what types of customers you service? Yeah, we, we our goal is essentially to be um, expertise at your fingertips for a fraction of a cost. So to a lot of SMBs even that have been around for maybe more than 10, 15 years, it's always someone within the organization that kind of serves the function of HR, but that's not necessarily the role that they were brought in for. And so that's the stage where they're like, okay, we're doing way too much ad hoc in HR, where it's like, okay, conflict resolution. Um, times are changing. Baby boomers are retiring. You're dealing with a lot of different age groups. And these are things that a lot of traditional industries, be um, in particular non-tech, are not so familiar with. And then they're like, oh, we are just familiar with people that have been with us for like 15, 20 years. What is all of a sudden we're getting a social media specialist that stuck around for six months and now we have a really high turnover rate. Do you think we're doing something wrong? So it's a lot of interesting questions that we have. And so we see ourselves really as a partner integrated. And and I joke about this internally with my team all the time. We're a non-tech API. So we integrate with you rather than you thinking you need to work with us. We adapt to what are your needs? How can we make everybody? Because HR, it's a... 
it's, we're not a platform, we're service providers. And so you have the, the people have to be able to confide in you. They have to be able to come back to you. So if they're going to feel like, okay, this is like, um, I only have availability to them within these hours, uh, they take forever to like respond and to like reply. I don't really know how I feel about it. You end up going back to the original person that brought you in to, you know, take HR off their plates. Um, so more like an extension, either to a current HR or a finance team that you have, or act as the first point of contact until you're ready. And in that, we are responsible for bringing in the HR, the right person, of course, kind of offboarding. And that's where our fade out phase happens. Interesting. So talk to me a little bit about the size of organization where this might make sense. And, you know, what the difference on having someone with the title HR versus the title you know, business owner and HR and finance might exist and what the, what the value that that brings to an organization might look like. Right. And, um, and I'd love to give you two different perspectives on this, especially because we are touch basing upon um, early stage startups as well. Um, we've had organizations as small as five because the founder already had experiences with HR when they were, for example, working on a full-time basis and saw the deal breakers of like, okay, that organization that actually had a proper HR, I ended up being retained more. I had a better onboarding experience. I had more structure and clarity. And in particular, in early stage startups, there isn't a lot of structure and clarity already. You're just becoming part of the vision and it's a baby and the founder is super excited about the baby that they have. But how do you like, kind of like communicate that? So we would like to act like a glass door ceiling between early stage founders in order to stay away from that corporate. And HR is pretty scary. Again, going back to like myths and stereotypes is like um, SMBs on the other hand side are like, well, we're too afraid. We don't want to make it too corporate. Um, we don't want people suddenly feeling like, what are KPIs? Why am I having a performance check with my HR? Why is a policy introduced to me? So we don't really like to work in that manner as well, in particular with the SMBs that have been established around for at least five and 10 plus years. Okay. Um, because then you also don't want to have a scary turnover rate where it's like, oh my God, HR came in and, and people that have not been productive, they already know that. So before you even doing a pulse check, it could lead to like, I think it's time for me to resign before HR finds out that I haven't been doing my things the proper way. Um, so it's extremely custom. Um, from a team sizing, again, in startups, we've had as little as five people, um, an extension to um, a tech scale up as many as 250 plus employees. Wow. So, I mean, HR is a broad category, so maybe right. it's worth breaking down, you know, what types of things within HR, HRX Connect can help with, because I imagine there's people here, you know, we're eight or nine minutes into the podcast and they're saying, come on, I'm just going to post my resume or my, my job uh, posting up on LinkedIn right. and I'll put someone into QuickBooks that I hire as a contractor and just pay them by e-transfer. And that should be good enough to get me going to at least 25 or 30 employees. Why do I need HR? So what's covered under the banner of HR? Right. And which of these things was I just saying that are like super big red flags for an organization? I, I love how you summarize that, Mike, because that's literally one of the stereotypes that we're trying to like break through that you don't have to be at a set number of people to begin with before you start even thinking about about HR. We want to give you the luxury of having that infrastructure. I normally refer to like either as simple as like house cleaning rules or going to the dentist once a year and then not maintaining it thereafter and then going to the dentist again the year after. And it's like, well, I have cavities and kind of like the shade of my teeth looks completely different in comparison to last year. And it's like, well, have you been flossing? Have you been brushing like, you know, twice a day at least uh, for the bare minimum? Because those are the basic instructions that you're giving. Infrastructure is extremely important. And I'll break down what that infrastructure looks like. It entails to an onboarding process. It entails to an offboarding process. It kind of does a pulse check of like, where are you currently sitting with your processes, policies and procedures? because you have to be legal and compliant as well. So to your point, yes, it is. It could look as simple as like, well, I've already added them to QuickBooks as a contractor and I'm processing payroll. Are you doing it the right way though? Have you given them the right policies that they needed to be based on which province you are operating? If you are local, if you are national, were they given the right employee handbook? Have they signed off on that? There is a lot of checks that you need to do as well to ensure that it's been signed. Funny enough, you would be surprised to know that we enter and we look at employment agreements where 
it's not even initialed and it was supposed to be initialed on every single page and it was overlooked. The CEO forgot to date it properly. So there is a lot of little things. And now if you have to do a termination and it somehow ends up being a poor termination, what documents do you have to fight back? Um, and that ends up costing a lot of money. Um, it's very preventative. And, and the reason why we're working on like a completely different product for early stage startups that are in particular post revenue is preventative makes no sense. It's almost selling you a solution where you haven't encountered a problem too. Whereas with SMBs, they've already faced it and encountered it and they've realized the gap, but they just don't have the need, which we completely concur with as well, having someone full-time within that function because you'll get bored at one point. I mean, once your infrastructure is built and you've already reviewed the policies, which you do once a year, what are the next steps? How much more can you actually do, especially if there's no hiring activities? So- where and how does HRX Connect fit into this? Is it a service matching? Is it consultation? Is it structured marketplace? How, if I'm an organization looking for support and help, where do I get started? Right. Um, it's filling in the gap. So it's not some consultation would be more like advisory. Like you already have everything and you just want some, some expert opinion. That's third party because of what may be going on internally within your organization. And that just helps you make a more fair decision if that's what you're looking at. On the other hand side, if you're looking for execution, implementation, and overseeing the projects where you feel that there are gaps, that's really where we step into, where we don't just give you like, here you go, here's the list of the things that you need to do, which is more of a consultant's role, or like, again, going back to like an advisory role, but we actually help you execute it implemented and overseeing it as well. It's one thing for me to tell you this is the policy that you need to be, you know, following, but who is looking through that? Who's actually ensuring is that being followed? Is that executed? Is that even successful? In theory, oftentimes, especially in our head, a lot of things sound amazing. And then you put it into play and you're like, that looked like it was only going to be 15 minutes, but now we're like an hour and 30 minutes. Let's take it back. Let's, let's rework it. And so you actually need someone available in order to actually do that so it doesn't go back burdening to what you were planning on offboarding from your play so it's more like a plug and play extensions plug and play project bases um, retainer um, it highly depends on what level you're at uh, with your organization so where you know in the market do you see hrx connect fitting in and What's sort of differentiated for people saying, okay, I, I get it. I want some of these things for my organization, but shouldn't I just wait until I can hire an entire person? Or maybe I can just go to Fiverr and, you know, find someone to draw up an HR contract for my new employee. Where in the spectrum does this fit? And what do you feel are some of the unique differentiated things that you're bringing to market as HRX Connect? Yeah, absolutely. And and those are literally the questions that were thrown out during like discovery calls where it's like, well, I mean, we don't really have a lot of problems. We can also wait it out. Um, culture is a big piece um, of it. How do you create belonging now to that culture? Culture is day in and out, how you operate, how you behave, how you interact with each other. How have you defined your values? Um, retention then leads back to, again, the whole concept of onboarding. Statistically, your onboarding rate and retention rate increases by 70% if you do it the proper way with like a proper structure. So although, and we give this example that it's not necessarily tangible when you see uh, things not really working out within your HR functions, it, there's no debiting from your debit account. Like, you know, you look back, I'm pretty sure every founder before they go to bed, they look at what the numbers look like. There is no such function as like HR debited this, this month. Much. But if you do the math, everything is added back to it. Having a productive team member that can probably do better work um, of six hours rather than just having someone sitting on that chair for like eight hours, that again um, is something like a C we love working with CFOs because they understand our concepts because they look at the numbers of like high turnover rates. They look at numbers of the cost going back into now filling that role up again from your investment of the interview processes, training them again, onboarding them again, equipment. And 
um, ad spend, which is extremely costly. It's no longer just, well, I had a job posting up on LinkedIn. Are you even getting the right profiles? Is your job description aligned with like the title that you have? There's misclassification lawsuits that you could be sued for unintentionally. You had no idea. You put up a junior project coordinator, but in reality, all of the responsibilities are more aligned with like a COO. Um, and, and you didn't really know that because you didn't know that a job description is completely different than a job posting. So it's mm -hmm. a lot of like gray areas that founders or um, SMBs in particular are unaware of. And when you educate them on it, it's like, oh, that, that's a concept we didn't know about. Um, your employment agreements, we highly encourage getting a draft from your lawyer that you trust first, and then you can work on that um, template itself. There is an overlap between HR um, and, of course, legal and compliance. But it's not something that should be overlooked. When we speak with business owners who have been around for like 20 years, they're like, yeah, looking back at like 10 years ago, we should have had an HR in place and it wouldn't have costed us $15,000 in like a misclassification lawsuit. And the way I look at it is it's a waste of money because you could have grown someone internally. You could have given them a bonus that was overdue. But now you spent all of that money in legal where you could have avoided it by having a one-time project set up, which, which we highly encourage through an HR audit leading to an infrastructure and what it should look like. Um, but you're responsible for maintaining it after if our concept is to be faded out. Yeah, it's a, one of those ones that organizations, you know, often overlook or they just think it's like, is it like insurance? Yeah. Uh, is it a nice to have versus a need to have? And I think right. what you're saying is... right. It's a need to have, which you feel like is a nice to have until it's not nice to have anymore. Absolutely. And it, you know, is, is causing a loss in your finances in a different way. Right. Your upside potential or bottom line right. uh, in many ways. So can you talk to us a little bit about how the model works? Um, so if I am interested in help and right. I want to be better at HR because I believe based on what you're saying so far. How does that model work with HRX Connect and where does, is it different for different types of businesses? Right. Um, it, it for sure is. And uh, that, again, is highly dependent on what are your objectives. Are you looking maybe to migrate, for example, from one platform that you're using? Uh, maybe it's from QuickBooks going over to HPoint because you prefer that payroll. That's just a one-time project. We quote you for like what the hours are going to look like, who's going to be involved. Um, are you looking more for someone that can oversee functions on a day-to-day -day basis? So it's fairly flexible, if I may say. Um, fade out concept, again, is one-time projects. They could vary three months, six months, eight months, um, all the way literally up to 18 months. Retainer model is more of like a day-to-day -day engagement where you're actually acting as like a function of HR. I have a conflict resolution where you've already been introduced. They know who to go to. Um, I have an offboarding um, that I need to be conducted. Then you know who you need to go to. Those are more day in and out functions. And then if you're only solely looking for recruitment, again, depending on what level of organization, if you're like a scale up and you know you just raised and um, you are really in need of filling in the right talent that you need, then you're looking probably at the contingent model. Are you looking on a month over month because you have X numbers that really need to be filled, then you can be put on a fractional recruitment model as well. So again, our whole concept literally is like, we want to work with you. What are your objectives? What are your needs? And then we kind of customize it on the basis of that, especially because we are services. There is no like tier one, tier two, tier three, mm -hmm. tier three, especially because our, our role and hopefully we can break through that. We don't want HR to be sacrificed. So at the same time, we don't want to restrict you that while unfortunately you're only on tier one, we, we probably would adjust hours, maybe the deliverables on like a month to month basis without necessarily sacrificing the, the need that you need. Got it. So it is pretty custom pretty to custom. your organization. Absolutely. The what you would pay varies quite substantially. But what I'm Absolutely. hearing is don't shy away because you're a smaller organization that yeah. maybe isn't bringing in right. massive amounts of top line revenue yet. If you right. have any revenue right. and you have, I think you said more than five employees or as little as five employees. As little as five employees. It may still be something that you can help with. Right. Um, and, and we do a free consultation call as well that literally could be like, oh, um, and, and we've done it funny enough with founders that had no intention, no desire, nothing associated with HR. And they had a list of like, I need 15, literally 15 employees. And we're like, but why? Let's break it down for you. And they ended up only hiring three. Oh, wow. And so the ambition sometimes is there where it's like in 
practicality, why do you think you need it? So we help them with the development of their team as well. So cost saving them money again. So let's come back full circle to your founder <laughs> journey, because now, you know, you're speaking as a founder. I think the part that was unique for me is, you know, what you're doing, um, maybe it, it does exist, maybe it doesn't, but we, we stumbled upon HRX Connect actually at Collision, yes. which maybe is a more unique place to see an organization that is, <laughs> you know, is this a traditional business? Is this a startup? And you who stumbled into foundership, maybe you're thinking about it differently. Where would you say you sit in that spectrum and what was your thinking around going to, to collision and what are you trying to kind of build to over time as right. part of the vision? Um, our goal is like, especially depending on like where we are currently sitting is uh, we've tapped into global clients. It's really to reach as many businesses where we feel like there is a gap in HR in particular. Um, and as we both know, frankly speaking, tr staffing agencies are pretty traditional. And so it's always been about how many roles do you have? How many can I fill it up for you? And you kind of leave it with the organization. But as we are evolving with technology and times changing, especially with the Canadian market that we have, there is an influx of immigrants coming through how are organizations actually adjusting to that it's it's still you cannot take away the human element out of it so there is a gap our goal is to to your point to ensure that the audience out there knows that there is a function available that does not necessarily restrict you to tier a tier a tier b tier c have yeah. a conversation with us and see where that's going to take you so be an extension to your current hr team if you have one fade out if that's the concept or act as one without sacrificing hr and for us that's super critical culture comes into it um, and that will really save you a lot of money and so how long have you been kind of building hrx connect and so August is a very fascinating month, I would say, for us. Um, okay. It's two-year anniversary for us in August, um, my son's 11th birthday. And then I guess we're having this podcast today. So it's it's been two years wow, um, of a founder journey. And so, you know, I think we, we started earlier on saying you weren't specifically ever planning to be a founder. Uh, different life circumstances came together and turned Absolutely. you into one. How has the journey been so far and what are some of the highs and some of the, the lows that people should know going into this? I think it's a fascinating journey as long as you believe in what your offering is. It could be a tech product. It could be services to similar um, to us. And the reason why I say that is as a solopreneur, it gets very lonely. You'll have clients, you'll have team members, but when you're going to bed with all the decision making thought processes that you have, you're literally bantering with yourself. Um, I would encourage find a really good support system that you have. Um, it could be friends. It does not always have to be someone from the tech ecosystem or the non-tech ecosystem, for example. That really makes a huge difference. Um, having the right type of people supporting you and hopefully with the right services, you'll find enough clientele that are willing to trust you. Um, I'll, I'll quote someone that I recently uh, met, I guess, anonymously, over promise, but make sure you deliver. Um, and, and I think that really like stuck with me because um, in services in particular, how you kind of like can build that because there will be points where you're like, we're not growing. And if the business is not growing, it's dying. How do I do that? Um, by, by quality delivery. Word of mouth will really, really help you a lot, especially in the very beginning. I mean, it is a business, but how do you grow that business by being lean? Um, you're, you don't have like, to your point, going back to San Fran or, or, or all these VC backed companies, you have big marketing budgets to spend. So you really have to think from like a lot of strategic angles. So uh, sometimes being an accidental founder pushes you into like, marketing is not really like my forte. So let's sit down and like, you know, research, how can we do marketing without breaking the bank? So maybe on the back of that, what's been the biggest challenge, um, you know, in this new foundership for you? Um, I think I'm pretty grateful, maybe because a lot of founders that I work with, so you get to observe, and especially when you are in the function of like HR, but finding the right HR for yourself. It's very interesting. That actually was a very different journey for me to find because when you are finding employees and you would think that like, well, well, you guys are like in HR or like you're you're in like recruitment because the model is still served in like an agency environment and the concept of staffing is extremely um agency focused but for hr it's only you've mostly been in hr for an organization 
um, it, it's not as popular. So bringing in that person, training them, putting them up to speed, multitasking, there's a lot of attention to detail. You, you cannot send the wrong agreement of a different client to a different candidate. Like imagine, th thankfully, we didn't have bloopers as such because we manage multiple different platforms for clients. I think that was one, one very interesting challenge that we had. Um, the shift of the economy. So luckily enough, even though this is something that I've been advised a lot, um, niche it down, niche it down. Now, had we niched down, for example, to VC backed organizations only when I had just started out in 2022, we probably wouldn't be left with any clients right now. Yeah, so sometimes cool. having a mixture, and that's really more luck, having a mixture has helped us to grow and I guess kind of like um, sustain. So don't rush into, you'll get a lot of feedback and opinions. Um, a little little cliche to say because everything should be backed by data, but you don't always have data. Go with your gut feeling. It it's it's pretty accurate. And you know, on that gut feeling, what's your gut telling you for the year ahead? Are there some things that you're working on that people should stay yes. tuned with uh, if they want to follow? The Absolutely. HRX you know journey? what? I think when we are ready to release all the exciting things that we are working on the back end, in particular for early stage startups, um, whether they are post revenue or not. I think they're going to love this new introduction that we're going to make. So we'll keep it like a little secret for now for by the time the launch share? is there. Oh my, it's it's going to be a huge, huge, um, I think a differentiator for for a lot of functions within within HR. So we're super excited. That, There's definitely a lot of exciting things that we're working on on the back end. And is that one of the big audiences that's going to benefit from some of the things coming down the pipe? Is this pre-revenue startup type organization? Our goal is for them. Why? Because we also don't want them to sacrifice HR. You don't need to be at set numbers um, of employees internally or at like a set revenue. There are certain functions that should still be accessible to you, yeah. uh, but everybody will benefit from this. In particular, HR people themselves. So <laughs> Good to know. <sighs> Advice for other founders. I think, you know, you shared some pieces there. You've obviously had this journey that's not the usual one. You were working full time. You're doing this as a as a single parent. Um, you're juggling it on top of all of those things. You know, what's advice for other people that either a are looking at a similar situation and saying, "I I don't know if this is for me," or for others that maybe don't have all of those mix of things that they're working through, but are questioning whether they should become a founder or continue their career right. where they are. Right. Um, I don't know if you're familiar, if the audience is familiar with Powerpuff Girls and there was potions that they mixed them that, you know, Powerpuff Girls were born. Um, I would say it's a mixture. It really, to your point, because I don't really have the traditional route of like a founder journey. If there's something that you're passionate about and you constantly have that thought, how can I do it at scale? Start with a freelance consulting gig. See how that goes. Um, ensure that you have enough savings, obviously, in your bank account with like a full-time or a part-time job, depending on what, what it is that you are doing, because you also don't want to put that extra pressure of like, you know, finances, especially in today's world and era. Um, f f try to find a mentor that can kind of be a friend, especially if you're a solopreneur. Um, and if you are going to into a non-tech role, then you probably don't really need a lot of like, you know, tech guidance. But if you are a non-tech, non like a, not a CTO or like a developer, but a tech product is something ideal, I would definitely say tap into some of your developer friends for like guidance so that you are not struggling. But I think your circle will, will help you really support a lot and narrow it down. Have a clear vision. And, and I'm not talking about, uh, you know, how people are like, what does the next six months look like? What do, you don't really know that, especially if you're a first time founder, you really have no clarity. Have a vision, a clear vision. What is your product? What are you going to serve service um, and who is your audience? That vision will help you narrow down your six months, your three months. But if I help ask you to break down the three months, six months, eight months, 12 months, what that looks like without you having clarity on your product, who are you servicing? And ideally, not necessarily perfect pitch like, you know, on point, ideally, who is the target audience? Um, it, it will definitely make the world's biggest difference. And I wish I had known that when I had started out. It's great advice. And I think it's funny because, you know, we've talked about people and a lot of your advice is around how people can, you know, take the right steps forward with the right people around them. Right. Um, I think it's really important that, you know, HRX Connect is making HR 
uh, a more democratized thing for every organization to be considering rather than waiting until it's too late or, you know, trying to plug the gaps with things that right. just really aren't going to cut it yeah. and then paying the price later, um, even though you might not be thinking it about it that way. So amazing work. It's cool to see someone that, you know, was very much on a traditional path that took the leap into being a founder and building a startup that is doing amazing things and continuing to see, succeed and grow. Any like closing thoughts from your side, uh, uh, Ferial, around what HRX Connect has become, what other startup founders need to be thinking about or advice for companies that, you know, are still still after, you know, 30 minutes of listening about where and how HR fits into their organization still on the fence? Um, if they are unclear, just book a call with us and you'll you'll get, get a lot more clarity. Um, if there are functions, and this is not just to advocate for HRX Connect, but if there are any functions within your organization where you may have a certain thought process associated to, I have to be at X revenue or I have to be at X number of like employees, Find a provider that you you kind of feel like you can trust as well. They're not just there to sell you. I don't believe, especially in early stage startups, every penny counts. We're a startup ourselves. We're bootstrapped. We're lean. We're non-tech. So I can completely empathize with it. But I would definitely say have those conversations. Don't make assumptions and don't negotiate on their behalf. The experts hopefully will be able to like clear a lot of the thought processes that you have. Um, I live by that slogan of Nike. Just do it. The worst case scenario, it just didn't work out. In in internally within our team, we stay away from the concept of failure. You just learned how to not do it like that, or you just learned this is just not for you. That's it. It's just part of life. It's a learning lesson, but just do it. Be calculative about it, not solicited advice, but um, just do it. It's very very wise words to close on. I'm not going to add anything else <laughs> other than thank you for joining us today, Fariel. Thanks to everyone that listened listened in on this important topic. Again, if you like the show, listen, subscribe, like, follow, share with your friends. If you've got recommendations for other amazing founders you'd like to see on, let us know. And we look forward to catching you all on the next episode. Thanks again for joining us today, Ferial. Thank you for having us, Mike.